that log may take a while to burn down. Morning. Came over to check on that fire. Still burning. Dad's uh, pushed all of the rest of the brush basically up on it and just keep pushing it around. It's going to take a long time to burn down. So anyway, uh, we're going to go back and jump in the mower and go mow some filter strips here this morning. Let's go mowing. We got, uh, what do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six filter strips to do all in the same spot. It's going to take a while. So we can mow all of this filter strip and the one on the other side of the ditch here. Uh, this one kind of curves and goes all the way back to the woods. We mow as much of it as we can. Dad put uh, some new blades on our mower. So they're now sharp. Does a pretty good job in this grass. Makes a nice clean cut. Okay, see all these thistles here? That's a big part of why we're mowing this. Um, one, it looks better, but two, it helps knock down all these weeds. Now, I would love to get to them and mow them down before they went to seed, but that's against the rules. So, we'll do as best we can here. Whoa! Yeah, that tire just ran over something. Back up. When you get along the ditch, you gotta be careful. Sometimes there's some old stumps or some piles of concrete or... You never know what you're gonna find hidden in the grass. So we uh, try and do just a little bit at a time. I don't know what's in there. Just a pile of dirt, maybe. Anyway, I'm about done on this one. All right, I, uh, I've jumped across the road here. This filter strip is thick. This grass is very thick. Uh, it's working the mower. I've had to slow down. Um, you guys probably don't recognize this field just from here, but the river is right there. And uh, if you go back to my pictures of some of the flooding and stuff, this is that field that the whole back half of it flooded out. All of this corn is replant corn out here. And uh, this whole thing was underwater. So while I'm mowing this that is super thick and I have to go slow, I also have to be on my toes for all of the driftwood floated out of the river and is laying somewhere out here. Yeah, listen to that. So, uh, yeah, this one's going to be a uh, go slow. It'll take me a while. Uh, also, you see how there's no tassels on these first few rows? Yeah, it's not because the corn's behind. That's because the deer have eaten the top of the plants off of all of those. Like the first four rows. Looking better. This is a very large filter strip. Holy crap, guys. I just flew my butt out of the seat. Oh, man. I'm glad I got stopped as quick as I did. All right, I'm going to back out of this. You watch how far my front tires sink. Yeah. That scared the crap out of me. You hit the uh, brakes and the clutch as fast as possible. I don't know, there's a gully there. Let's see if we can get a better look at it as we drive around it. It's always the risk, when you're, especially when you're right along the river or the, the edge of the woods. Yeah, there's some uh, concrete chunks back in there farther, so I don't know, but it must have washed out pretty good this spring when we had that five inches. Oh, all right, I'll keep going up here. So this field here is along the river. Um, this is, yeah. So up over there is that triangle field. There's a creek that goes that way, the river that makes up this edge, and it comes through here, and then it kind of turns and goes along the back of this field, which is why this filter strip is so big here. Um, but we have irrigated here before, and I'm actually in the spot right now where we set our pump when we do. And uh, so I was just going to walk down here and look at the river a little bit. This is where our pipe lays. It's washed in a little bit. We got lots of water here. 
water the river is up a little bit after the rain we had last weekend so but it's moving a lot slower here than where we're pumping now anyway yeah um we used to have more acres here uh we kind of lost the west half of this field three or four years ago and so there's not as many acres which is why we don't irrigate here anymore because we just it's it's not worth it if we don't have enough acres to cover or just depends uh with that other field that we've got having corn in it that's a much better place if we had beans there and corn here maybe we would have irrigated this instead but um yeah so that's that's that all right we're gonna keep going here i got a little bit uh of an area right here i'm gonna mow down because there's some trees and stuff starting in there i don't mow that every year but uh it's got enough trees starting that we're gonna mow that down and then uh go up along that creek out to the road there's i got one more pass to do there there goes all of next year's thistles blowing in the wind right out into our field <sighs> never ends. It's a never ending battle with the weeds around here. Finally, I made it back out to the road. Uh, it is noon on the dot, so I'm heading back to the farm. I'm gonna go get something to eat. And then uh, my agronomist is supposed to be coming out here this afternoon to go walk some fields and look through the plots. So uh, we'll check in with him, see what time he's gonna be here, and then we'll make a plan after I get back. So we got the mowing over there done, and then that's where we just came from on this other side of the road here, but we've still got uh, that side to do, all that stuff around that triangle field. And then uh, up on the other side of those trees is the other side of the river. We've got a bunch to do there too, uh, but I'm not gonna do it now and probably not today. So uh, this one's gonna take a while because there's a big drowned out spot up here that we had to plant around that all needs mowed down. All of that. And there is quite a bit on this other side of the river. It's not a small filter strip either, so we'll have to get back there. Alright, I gotta go. I'm about to get past by a house. I don't think I have ever been passed by a house before. Oh look! That's probably my electrical supplies. It is indeed. Sweet. So, uh, maybe we'll work on that when we get back. Okay, I am uh, back from lunch, and uh, I did get these boxes. I think I showed you that already. But anyway, so I'm going to work on this for a few minutes, but my agronomist texted me probably a half hour ago to tell me he'd be here in 40 minutes. So he'll be here in the next few minutes and then we're gonna go walk some fields. Okay, so we're up here walking some bean fields. We're in a field of my uh, 2230, the real early uh, beans because we're gonna plant wheat here this fall. They've gotten tall, waist high on me, which is awesome. What do you know about them? They look pretty good, um, three bean pods. Uh, most of the way, which we can see some. Right there, before. right there, Looks two of them on that node. Yep. Got some Sectoria brown spot, which you expect to see in lower bottom leaves. Bottom leaves. Yep. So you'll see that when we kind of brush them apart. All the bottom leaves are sort of yellow. Good so. nodules. Tall plant. <laughs> yeah. Um, tall plants don't necessarily mean high yields, but this, I mean, these beans are pretty good. I've I've noticed that the nodes down lower are fairly close together. Yeah, they are stretching and out towards the top here, but mm -hmm. uh, just kind of the way they grow, but also probably the dry weather affected them. Certainly. Yep, so I'm pretty happy with this field. This did get sprayed. I'm pretty sure we put Miravis Neal on this one. So the top of the canopy looks pretty good. There are a few holes down farther, some Japanese beetles here, but nothing too bad. R4. R4, yep. Good deal. Okay, we're up in our uh, irrigated cornfield, pulling some ears and looking. And, and honestly, they're not super impressive where we're at but the population is so thick here that it gives us uh, uh, more yield with smaller ears so and we just decided to dig some roots look at all of the root fibers in there boy that's impressive if you're gonna plant high pops you gotta have a plant that can handle it yep so that's good pretty good corn it's gonna be pretty good corn I don't know how good I don't know if it's gonna be as good as I hoped but it looks good. It yeah. looks good. It looks good. Just hope we uh, 
continue to grain fill and have heavy corn come fall. Yep, which means it needs water. Fortunately, I can do something about that here. Okay, we found another cornfield. This is not an irrigated cornfield. A 107 day hybrid here. Planted that first week of May whenever it was. I didn't look at the date. Um, for the most part, the plants look pretty healthy. I did find right here, we've got some Japanese beetles. They like to eat these silks while they're still green, but I think for the most part we're past pollination here. So not a big deal. I'm not gonna worry about those Japanese beetles. The leaves look pretty healthy. I'm pretty sure that I sprayed at least a couple of strips in this field uh, with a V6 early fungicide, but that's long gone and not helping us anymore. So yeah. Well, the kernel counts on these ears are not terrible, but they are definitely smaller ears than what we were in a little bit ago, and there's not as many of them. This was not planted nearly as thick, so population is lower. Definitely not as good a corn as our irrigated stuff. But, quite frankly, I would hope it's not, otherwise all that work I've been putting in is for nothing, so <laughs> I expect that. But it still looks pretty decent. Okay, time to uh, walk the plots here and take a look at all our varieties and we'll go through the corn ones too. Wade, you want to do virtual field day here? You tell me everything you know about all these as we go through them for YouTube? You got to tune in August 25th. We're going to have a oh, virtual field day. Oh, there you go. We are going to do one. Yeah, that'd be long. You guys don't want to sit through all that, so. Yeah, they do. Yeah. <laughs> How do they look though? Ground's so hard we can't even pull them out, see? Broke all the roots off. Yep. You do see some nodules, so that's a good thing. Yep, all right. Nitrogen. So we haven't done any soybean lessons on stuff. I've talked about corn quite a bit, but we'll do some beans here. So, yeah, we broke most of the roots off, but you see these, no, not that one. You see these little nodules, focus, right there, kind of on the roots. Those are what provide the nitrogen to the plant. It's a symbiotic relationship between uh, the soybean plant and Brady, Brady, rhizobia. Brady rhizobia. Yep. And the plant feeds the rhizobia. The rhizobia take nitrogen out of the air, turn it into a plant available form for the soybean to use. Right? Hit it on the head. Right. So, and then we've got the nodes going up the plant. Some of them have branches with more nodes and pods, which is good. Some of them have a bunch of pods hanging off of them. Yeah, they look they look okay. This one doesn't look as good as the one we looked at earlier, actually, but. Yeah. So interesting genetic difference from the variety we were just in over there to this one. Look at this long, narrow soybean leaf. Like, just, they look very different. Let's see. Let me go back over there so you can see it. So I'm standing in the split row. You can visually just see a difference just looking at them. Here is this long, skinny, narrow leaf. Here's the one next to it that a little more triangular shaped, but like they're they're not nearly as narrow as these ones are. Interesting. It's got a few pods on it too, especially towards the bottom. I always like it when you can look at the side of the plant and the pods are overlapping each other. That's usually a pretty good sign, especially when there's four or five, six of them on a node. This one looks good. Two five enlist bean. Uh oh, guys. Look what we found. This is not good. See this dead plant there? Dead leaves. More dead leaves. I have a pretty good idea what's causing that. Wade, your assessment is? Oh, when it melts down like this, it's probably a water mold. A water mold? You don't think it's white mold? I don't see any rat turds on it. Well, they'd be in the stem. I've seen them out. Really? We'll split it open. All right. I thought for sure it was going to be white mold. Either way, it's not good. There's dead plants out here. I don't see a ton of them, but it didn't look real hard for those ones. Well, there's a little bit of white on the outside. We'll see. I'll stand not where you're going to swing that knife. Yeah, maybe not. So usually the way to tell if it's white mold is you split the stem open and it's got black, looks like mouse turds in the center of the stem. It's all, the pith in there is kind of turned black and I don't see it in there. I don't know. We'll have to keep an eye on this variety. 
This is a new one. It's very tall, kind of thin, probably not great in 30 inch rows like I planted it, but uh, yeah, the next three to four weeks, we're going to see which varieties are going to hold up to disease and which ones aren't. And it's, it's, you're going to be able to tell. Uh, white mold's not something that our fungicide will control. Probably none of these molds are really. So we'll see. Well, this next variety, which is a 3.3, has got some of that uh, mold or rot or something in it. I haven't diagnosed exactly what it is, but we got dead stalks. Um, like I said, not a lot, but they were there. And we're kind of debating what it is and when it started, whether it was from the five and a half inch rain we had earlier this year. You can see here some more wilty leaves, like this one's gonna die. Yeah, you know, the base of that plant is dead. Um, doesn't really look like white mold. We've ruled out a few things. Well, Wade did. And uh, I don't know. Yeah, SDS. It's usually pretty early for SDS to be starting right now. Yeah. SDS is a pathogen that starts, actually infects the plant early, right after planting. Um, doesn't really hurt the plant until later in the season when it starts to produce toxins. And right. And it's no good. Right. But it's usually the end of August before we start seeing it show up. We're pretty early. So, I don't know. We'll see if we find any more, but... Something to keep an eye on for sure. We have moved into the seed treatment portion of our plot. So these two rows are the split, but they're the same variety. We've got our Saltro versus Olivo over here. And I don't know if you guys can see it, but there does appear to be a little bit of a difference in them right now. Uh, I can see just a little bit wider gap between this row than you can in this one. And I, I don't know. We'll see. But that's... that's and it's pretty awesome to see a difference, especially at this stage in the game. Okay, see those little things? Those are, what are they called? Sclerotia. Sclerotia. Okay, well those are what poof out the spores for white mold that get it on the plants and start killing them. I don't see any dead plants right here. But that's what we're not, what we are looking for, but hoping to not find, more or less. Huh. <sighs> Well, if it's not one thing, it's another. All right, we came back out to the end to look at my stakes to double check what we were in. We've got our population study here. That sign is in the 120,000. Wade's here in the 160,000 population. And then this one is 200,000. And uh, I'm sure there's quite a difference in them. I don't know if you can tell how closely together the plants are. Eh, that doesn't look like a real representative spot. But... Uh, yeah, there should be a big difference in, in the actual plants and the closeness of them and stuff. So, And while I'm right here, haha, my early planted beans. You guys remember these? We haven't talked about them for quite a while. This row here planted March 17th. This row here planted April 4th, I believe. They're alive. They survived. They've got flowers. They've got pods. They've got lots of nodes. That is a complete success. That is just unbelievable. Fantastic. Okay, it's time to move on to the corn plots. And uh, we're going to start with a couple of competitors here and look at what I found first off. So what competitor is this here, Wade? DeKalb. This is DeKalb 6088. Here's what I want you to know about 6088. Uh, number one, I don't sell it, so I'm not promoting it. So don't take any of this literally. But look at how much smut it gets in it. I mean, that hybrid just is just, it's just full of smut. Look at it. It's everywhere. I wouldn't plant that one if I was you. You see any of that in the Golden Harvest? I don't nope. See any. Don't see any. Yeah. Something like that. I mean, unless you're from one of those places that eats this stuff. But I'll pass. Ew. What's it caused by, Wade? What is it? I don't remember. You don't, oh, come on. Not off the top of my head. It's a fungal, it's a fungus that grows oh, on there. Right. And obviously in this case, it's caused by uh, deer damage. Basically the deer come in here. They walk along my corn, as I've shown you before. They take a bite right out of the center of the plant. It opens up a spot for that disease and the fungus to get in there. And that's what kind of starts it growing. You'll find it in sweet corn a lot, but usually we don't see it in the field of corn unless the plant got physically damaged somehow. As far as what causes it, what the disease name is, I have no idea. It's yeah. smut. All right, I guess I'm gonna have to be a little more you, serious. This is gonna be one of the uh, one of the big ones, at least for Ohio. Big dog, 14 and 11. If you can plant 114 day corn, 
plant this one. Yep. I'll sell it to you, but I, it's pretty pushing it for my area. We don't plant any corn this full of season. Pretty nice year. Although that's a pretty good year. It's developed pretty well. We'll compare this to the early stuff and you, maybe you guys can see a difference in the maturity as we go. And I know when I say 114 day or 100 day or 110 or whatever, it probably doesn't mean a whole lot to most of you, but I'll see if I can show you at least a little bit. Look what I found. Rows and rows on this one. 20 around. That's awesome. Looks good. This is a 112 day new one for me. Um, farmers like rows around on corn because it makes the ears look really nice. It doesn't always translate into yield real well. But boy, does it make some nice pretty ears. Looks good. Okay, corn disease lesson time because... Wade tells me this hybrid's susceptible to northern corn leaf blight. So I said, yeah, look, there it is. So you see this uh, kind of cigar-shaped lesion on that leaf? That is a disease called northern corn leaf blight. Blight. Good guess. And, uh, yeah, that's the only one I see so far. But I bet I could find more if we looked out here hard enough. And that's kind of what we sprayed our fungicide for, right? So this field did not get sprayed at Tassel here because it's sort of hard to do. I would have had to have the plane do it. Um, but we also get to see the different disease tolerances on all these hybrids when you don't spray them. So, uh, interesting, but it's there. We'll see how bad that gets over the next few weeks and see if it was worth spraying our corn or not. But, uh, certainly is some disease starting to set in. So here's an interesting little development on this plant the variety. Um, remember I told you before that corn produces a lot of ears, like every node up the plant? but usually only one will make it. Well, I don't know if they made it yet, but these two ears came off the same plant. Well, those are both gonna make something. One, two, three, four, five, six, at least six plants in a row all have two ears on it. Hmm, maybe. Now my plot here is sort of thin population, got damage from all the water. I don't know if you can see the thin spots over there and over there and stuff. So uh, lower population is more likely to make that happen. Uh, this is the same hybrid as one of the ones up in my irrigated field. I didn't notice that up there. It's possible that they're there, but um, yeah, that'll make it yield pretty good. If you can get two ears that look like that. So we're moving into the earlier stuff here, down to 104 day. Um, we've got a bit of a height difference. I think there's a difference in the genetics here. Wow, quite a difference. This is 104 day uh, 04S19. I didn't have the sign when I put them up, so I, I think I got it now. I should put it up. But uh, this one's a new one, 04G36. First look I've had at it. It's short. I don't care for this hybrid, so maybe this one will be good. Usually short means it stands really well, and that's a good thing. That is a nice ear. Can you tell we're getting into the earlier stuff yet? See the difference in maturity? I'll compare them at the end. We'll show you side by side, but... Uh, Definitely farther along in uh, in its maturity process here. Really nice ear. Every single time. Every year in my plot, I've always got one hybrid that's just a little bit ahead of everything else. The coon find it and they destroy it. Destroy. I think it was two years ago I had a number in the plot that actually yielded six bushel per acre because the coon had taken so much of it. There was nothing left. Looks like this is the one. It's an experimental number. And I have earlier hybrids. I will see how much damage is in those. But that, that's the strip right there. Ugh. Coon damage. This is, this is bad out here. Found a 22 around her. Double OH12, 100 day corn. All right, we have seen them all. Anything jump out at you, Wade? 10L16, 10D21, a couple of the newer experimentals look pretty good, so yep. I am I am pleased. Okay, well we're walking back down here to the full season stuff. This ear is out of the 95D32. 95 day was the earliest corn that we had in this plot. You can see how yellow it is, how big those kernels are. This is almost ready to dent. It's not yet, but it won't take it long. Within a week, it'll be dented, I would assume. And let's find one of my full season ears and I'll show you a comparison. Right there. So this is our 114 day. 
this is our 95 day and they kind of taper down all the way from this or well from this up to this or whatever you, you want to say it but uh that's just kind of the difference in the maturity so obviously this one's going to be mature well before this one will uh, which means it'll start drying down faster it should be a lot drier in the fall the green um, when we're ready to start harvesting it which is a good thing now whether this hybrid yields enough more to make up for the moisture difference i guess remains to be seen but that is the theory the fuller season corn has better yield potential but it's going to be a little bit wetter so the key kind of is still staying in your maturity zone 114 days pushing it for us here 95 is way too early in my opinion 105 to 110 day is our sweet spot we stay in there and that's those hybrids are going to perform the best in our region growing conditions weather conditions climate all that stuff so we'll see we'll see what it amounts to in the fall all right thanks to wade for coming up walking fields with me today i appreciate that it's always good when i can get an agronomist that knows more than i do to come and uh, help teach me some stuff so uh, really appreciate it. We got to lock it. look at quite a lot of uh, corn, certainly through the plot. There are a lot of different hybrids and uh, a few different fields and stuff. So good stuff. For the most part, corn looks pretty decent. Um, but we'll see once we get to the fall. Another three, four weeks, and we'll be able to go out and take some ear counts and stain counts and, and get a little bit better estimate. But uh, still a little bit early for that. So uh, anyway... I'm just kind of playing with my uh, sensors and stuff, or my, my bin electrical project here a little bit. Um, so this is essentially what we're going to have going up the side of the wall of the bin. Our conduit will come into the bottom here with our, uh, our, our po positive and ground wires, a 12 volt, a red and a black. And then uh, a sensor wire, I drilled a hole in the box, put a little rubber grommet in there, wire fits through that. Uh, this will go next to it through the bin wall and um, then we'll make our connections in there. I took the cover plate, I drilled the hole in it for our light, so that, that can all be connected the way it needs to, and then uh, we'll put that on there and seal it up, and then we'll have the box, the sensor, and a light on the wall of the bin all the way up. So uh, I've gotten a lot of comments and questions or suggestions on how to do this, and some of them are pretty good, um, and I appreciate it, but I got this. Um, some of you were saying that I should I should put the sensor through the boxes as I go up, which that was my original plan. The problem is the way that the corrugations work on there. There's going to be a big gap between the box and the bin wall, and there's no way for me to get in there and tighten the nut up against the bin wall and seal it good if I did that. So that's why I'm going to put them off on the side and just run the cord into the bottom of the box with that uh, grommet around it. Um, the sensors themselves are weather tight. I'm not worried about them at all. And so as long as I can sort of seal up the bin wall so that we're not getting water into the bin and then around the uh, uh, the boxes that have all the connections in it, that will be just fine. You know, exactly like I did here. So all we've got to do is seal up around this one, that one. I've got a grommet. I just got to get it in there. That plastic box was thick, so it didn't fit real, real, real well, but we'll make that work. Um, and then we've got to drill a hole in the top of that box and put a box connector in it for a conduit. It's going to go up. A um, couple other suggestions that I got. Uh, one common one was to use the ladder inside the bin, just mount, whoa, fall, mount my uh, sensors to that and then run all the wires outside, which is not a bad idea and probably something I should consider quite a bit more because it gives me that ladder to work off of. Um, Problem is, you guys see this ladder? You see these brackets? Well, they didn't come like that. You would be amazed at the force of the grain pulling down in here. And so the less stuff that I can have in here for the grain to act on and pull on and try and move, the better. And that's why this just sticking through the bin wall, mounted solid, it isn't going anywhere. I'm afraid if I made conduit and stuff and put it on that ladder, it'd have to be secured very well. But that whole thing's going to vibrate and shake, and I'm afraid it would come loose or something. And uh, the forces of the grain moving down through it and then being refilled and down and refilled and uh, as much as it's moving uh, would cause me some problems. Plus, it would require quite a bit more wire 
because I would have to run the wires all the way up and down and then out in just one particular spot, which is fine. Uh, and I could mount a box right out here on the side of the bin to put uh, all the lights in, you know, and just have them all right at the ground level, uh, which would work. But the biggest thing that I want to do this for is so that when we pull in the driveway with a truck, you can see those lights and know how full the bin is. Or when I pull in in the morning after we've been drying corn all night or something, I can see where it's at. And where I'm positioning them, I will be able to see those lights from the driveway or heck, I'd be able to see them from a field a half a mile away if I want to. So um, that's kind of why I did it this way. Um, I've seen other people that have done this in some pictures. It looks really cool. It looks like it's gonna work really good. I'm pretty confident in my mounting uh, procedures and what I've got going on with those electrical boxes and how it's gonna work. So appreciate the suggestions. They're, they're good, they're helpful. Uh, but there's I'm gonna do it the way that I was planning just for a few different reasons there. So It is however 530 and time for me to go home. So I'm not gonna work on this tonight I'm gonna put it on the list of things to do tomorrow. This is my plan. Tomorrow's Friday, right? Pretty sure So uh, we'll work on that may do some more mowing tomorrow. I don't know what else I'm sure that this video is pushing a half an hour long or longer by now I feel like I filmed a lot today. So I'm sorry for that, but uh is what it is. I'm gonna walk out here, pick some more sweet corn to take home, and I'm gonna go home and find something to eat and hang out with the family. And uh, we'll be back at it tomorrow. Starting to get some more here. Coming on a little slow. It'll be, uh, we'll have sweet corn for a while. That's a good thing. And the last time I only took three years home, my boys decided to eat one, so I only got one. So I'm taking four tonight. Anyway, have a good night, everybody. Um, Thanks for watching. If you have any questions and comments, leave them down below and uh, hit that like and subscribe buttons for me, would you? We'll see you guys tomorrow.